Good afternoon. I will call to order the June 27th meeting of the Minneapolis City Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Matt Brown. I serve as president of the commission. I'm joined today by Commissioners Gagnon, Kronzer, Magrino, Slack, and Breland. Uh, you can find hard copies of our agenda in the hallway. Uh, I, at this time, I'll also ask you to silence any mobile devices to avoid uh, disrupting the meeting. Uh, our first item of business is to approve the actions from the June 13th meeting. Commissioners may have a, an, a motion to approve those actions. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? And that motion carries. Next, we will go through the agenda and determine which items will be on consent and which will be discussed. So starting at the top of the agenda, item number one is the HCMC Intensive Residential Treatment Services Building at 3633 Chicago Avenue. That is a conditional use permit for a uh, community residential facility. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on that item? Seeing no one, we'll put item one on consent. Item two is the Calhoun Village Shopping Center at 3200 West Lake Street. That's a site plan review for a drive through there. We will discuss that item. Item three is the Bricks Grocery and Deli at 915 West Broadway. Uh, several applications for a new commercial building there. Uh, Commissioner Magrino, I understand you have a question about that, so we'll discuss item two, or excuse me, item three. Item four is the Bonadier Academy Edition at 1201 and 1203 Bryant Avenue North. That's an expansion of a non-conforming use for an addition to a school building. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on item four? Seeing no one, we'll put that on consent. Item five is the PPL Youth Link Supportive Housing and Youth Link Renovation at 41 North 12th Street. Uh, several applications for an addition to a residential building there. Is anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on that item? Yes. This, right now we're going through the agenda, we're talking about item five, which is at 41 North 12th Street. Uh, is there anyone wishing to speak on that item? Uh, seeing no one, we'll put item five on consent. Item six is the Spectrum Apartments and Townhomes at 803 and 815 9th Avenue Southeast and 805, 817 and 821 8th Street Southeast. Several applications for uh, new residential buildings there. Is anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on item six? Seeing no one, we will put item six on consent. And let's see here. Item seven also relates to the Spectrum Apartments and Townhomes at 815 9th Avenue Southeast. That's uh, a variance related to that project. Is there anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on item seven. Seeing no one, we'll put that on consent. Item eight is 600, Ave excuse me, 600 Washington Avenue Southeast, 612 Washington Southeast, and 311 Harvard Street Southeast. Several applications for a new multifamily residential building there. Is anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on item eight? Seeing no one, we'll put that on consent. Item nine is the 721 North First Street Apartments at 721 North First Street. Several applications for a new uh, residential building there. Is anyone wishing to speak in opposition to or modify the staff recommendation on that item? All right, we have some people for that. So we will discuss item nine. And finally, item 10 is the 38th Street Mixed Use Project at 2707 East 38th Street. Uh, 3800 through 3812 28th Avenue South. Those are several applications for a new mixed use building there. We will discuss item 10. So our agenda as amended is as follows. Items one, four, five, six, seven, and eight will be on consent. And we will discuss items two, three, nine, and 10. Commissioners may have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? And that motion carries. Uh, next, we will consider the Committee of the Whole Consent Agenda items. Commissioner Slack, could you give us an update from the June 16th meeting? 
Thank you, President Brown. At the uh, June 16th uh, Committee of the Whole, we heard two items, a uh, series of land sales. The first was 1730 Newton Avenue North, 2023 Queen Avenue North, 1505 California Street North, 2632 Polk Street Northeast, and uh, 2800, or 2808, uh, 2008 uh, Washington Street Northeast. And the second land sale was 901 45th Avenue North. Uh, the recommended motion was to approve staff recommendation that uh, these items were consistent with the Minneapolis plan for sustainable growth. All right, and I will take, yeah, all right, we have a motion and a second to approve the Committee of the Whole Consent Agenda. Uh, Commissioner Luffy Peer. I'll be abstaining from uh, voting on this motion due to item number two. All right. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor? And that motion carries. Uh, next, we'll move on to the public hearing portion of the meeting. And at this time, I'll open the public hearing for the items on the consent agenda. That is items one, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Is there anyone who is wishing to speak on any of those items? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and commissioners may have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? And that motion carries, the consent agenda is approved. Uh, next, we'll move on to our items for discussion. We will start with item two, the Calhoun Village Shopping Center staff is Ms. Sether. Thank you, President Brown, commissioners. Item number two on today's agenda is for the property located at 3200 through uh, 54 West Lake Street. The subject property is an existing shopping center. Um, the zoning classification for the property is C3S, which is our community shopping center district. The parcel is just under six and a half acres in size. Um, the immediate areas within a major retail center. This is a designated land use feature within the Minneapolis Comprehensive Plan. Um, along West Lake Street, we have a mix of uses, large uh, high density residential office uses and large retailers. To the north, we have um, a tall converted uh, grain elevator into residential uses and then some low density residential north of there. The subject property is very unique in that it has um, an existing access point to the Midtown Greenway, which you can see here. Um, many pedestrians and bicyclists use this access point through the property. The, applica uh, the applicant is before you today requesting uh, a site plan review application. The site plan review application is triggered uh, due to the addition of a drive through. The drive-through would be at the rear of the east building uh, at the northeast corner of the site. You can see it would be right here. It would be for a double drive-through, so there would be two pickup windows and they have provided the adequate stacking. So the only land use application before you today is the site plan review. The subject property is located within a uh, future transit station area for the West Lake Station uh, uh, for the Southwest Light Rail project. Um, and it uh, is within the area that was just completed for the West Lake Street Multimodal Transportation Study. So that transportation study looked at future connections through bike and pedestrian um, through the proposed site if they could work something out with with uh, the current property owner or a future developer. So in this case, um, the future developer is proposing something uh, more or less consistent with the plan. So you see, according to the plan, they still show that existing uh, greenway access point. Um, this is currently how it's laid out. So you'll see that uh, there's things that it's called for, such as elevated bike and pedestrian uh, access points. And so I'm gonna go back to the site plan and show you how that translates here. So here you're seeing that the applicant is proposing to continue that access point to the Midtown Greenway. This would be elevated for bike and ped. And then you'd have a split bicycle and ped uh, uh, area there. And then it carries all the way through to the south. Public Works has been very um, 
clear that they do not want to add any wayfinding signage at this time or additional paint marketing the site because the future uh, connections that would connect Midtown Greenway to Lake Calhoun will not be in place for some years. It's on the long range plan, which is about five to 10 years out. So in addition to that, the applicant is also providing a three-way transit stop here. So there'll be stop signs at this uh, intersection here and here. They did not want to have the northbound traffic from market, um, which is private in, at this location, uh, queuing up and then causing some issues with Westlake Street. You'll see a very extensive landscape plan. The site is being brought into compliance with the minimum landscaped area requirements, minimum landscaped yards for the most part. We'll talk about that through alternative compliance. Uh, but they're also providing the minimum tree and shrubs as required by the zoning code. So the only um, alternative compliance requested for the site is the landscape yard at the south. Um, and that is where West Lake Street starts to um, ramp up, if you will, to go over the Midtown Greenway and the former tracks. So there's a portion here um, that would not have trees or shrubs. They're not really visible from the public realm. Um, and then landscape area at the north and uh, staff recognizes that the property to the north owned by Hennepin County is heavily treed and provides sufficient landscape barrier. They also have a fence there. Um, so that covers the third point of alternative compliance, which is screening of the north parking lot. Um, and then also we have an existing condition with these parking stalls uh, that are located in that location. There are no proposed changes there, some of which are right up to the property line. Staff recognizes that as an existing condition. Um, and then 50 feet to an on-site deciduous tree, all of them except for those parking spaces I just noted on the northwest corner of the property. So staff is recommending approval with several conditions. Um, oh, here, let's go through. So the proposed tenant is a drugstore, as I mentioned. Um, we have a basic layout. We are asking that uh, the shelving and, and other functions not block the proposed windows. The applicant is uh, replacing what uh, in the Barnes and Noble space as uh, display windows with actual uh, clear glazing that will allow views and in, in and out of the site. Uh, here's a rendering. Um, so it's not really a building addition. The only trigger again is just that drive through uh, per chapter 530. And here are the conditions as stated. So it was very important to staff um, long term that if the amenity to provide that mid, uh, Midtown Greenway access through the property, if that were to ever go away for one reason or another, we're asking that that come back to the Planning Commission for review. So through the condition of approval, recommending approval of this site plan, that that would be one of the triggers. So either the bikeway or the, the, the uh, ped connections to the greenway if that were to go away then we would bring it back for an amendment and and review it here um otherwise um the common conditions of approval review of the site plan etc so with that i can take any questions all right so are there any questions of staff uh if there are none at this time i'll open the public hearing for this item i'd like to ask the applicant to speak first and just so i have an idea can i see a show of hands how many of you wish to speak on this item so a few of you. Uh, yeah, let's let's have the applicant uh, speak first and please state your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. Tony Keepley representing Doran Companies or in Doran Calhoun LLC. We're the prospective purchaser of the shopping center. Uh, our address is 7803 uh, uh, Glenroy Road in Bloomington, uh, Minnesota. Um, I don't have much to add. Ms. Seether did a fantastic job, I think, summarizing our uh, proposed site plan. Um, I just want to point out that the improvements are not mutually exclusive. Um, we would not be creating the bikes, bicycle and pedestrian uh, enhancements to the site if it wasn't for the drive-through. Um, and if we're not awarded the drive-through or afforded the drive-through, uh, we won't be moving forward with those, uh, those enhancements. Those enhancements were those enhancements were purely meant to improve the safety around the site and actually preserve the access point uh, up to the Midtown Greenway. Thank you. All right. Are there any questions of the applicant, Commissioner Kronzer? Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Um, 
do you know how wide the fence opening is right at the Midtown Greenway? It, right now it's fairly wide and it's being shifted a little bit to the east. I think the location is not adjusting, it's just it's, how it travels through the site. So you'll see it, it's intended to line up, if you will, with the future pedestrian. Because it's, it's about 15 feet now, it'd be good to keep that width. Yes. It's a, it's a good width. Yep. Um, even to get potentially even emergency vehicles. Yep. Um, also, do you know how the vehicles are detected at the drive through? Is it a camera detection? Is it a... You may not know the answer to this because it's a uh, it's um, right now. The, I believe there's no detection. Um, we don't anticipate the volume of the drive-through being so significant that we need to have that detection. It would be actually as you would pull up to either the window or the secondary window on the double drive-through. Okay. Um, and can you? Ex is there any changes to the site lighting with this uh, proposed pedestrian bike? There is no proposed changes to the site lighting. No proposed changes. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. Commissioner Slack, I think the uh, applicant just mentioned um, his perceived amount of, of use of the drive through. Um, why does it constitute two uh, lanes? Uh, the two drive throughs, the double lane drive through actually was requested by our tenant. Um, and as we looked through the city code, we saw that it, there was still allowed within the city code. So that's why we're asking for the double drive through. I believe it's for convenience for their guests. Um, did you did you look at other options for uh, essentially parking lot layout and alignment of the drive through? Uh, I, for, for me, um, there there are some real positives with the plan. Uh, you know, the, the pedestrian and bicycle enhancements are, are fantastic. Uh, the raised crosswalks are fantastic. Uh, essentially, getting rid of, of two drive lanes, two dri essentially two driveways, and consolidating the one is great. Uh, my problem with this layout and orientation is that um, as you as you exit the the drive up window and you, you essentially turn sort of sort of north you're, you're looking towards the greenway and if anybody is riding uh, north uh, on a bicycle lane or walking um, the driver itself he's he's not looking at that individual and so it would take a, a pretty uh, large movement for that individual in the car to, to turn over and to actually see somebody coming up and so I feel like the stop signs in the wrong spot and I feel like that that drive lane is too close to the to the crosswalk I'd almost prefer to see it be, if if it has to happen, I almost prefer to see it uh, further to the east. Um, maybe you pick up some of that extra parking up in the sort of the northeast corner of the site, but um, it seems real problematic from the standpoint of, of the interaction of bikes and peds, which you're really trying to promote, and cars coming out of that drive-through. We can certainly look at moving into the east. That was actually intentional um, to have the drive-through come up and go straight north um, and allow for a stop procedure before they could actually then take the left, other than you know, kind of reducing the drive lane and having it come straight through where there would be some un uninhibited you know, vehicles moving through without a stop procedure. And maybe that's the right thing, just from a, a, somebody who does site planning, it feels like you want people to come out of the drive through, hang a left, and then stop at the crosswalk and be able to look both directions rather than stop and then hang a left into potentially oncoming bikes or peds. And like I said, we did that actually intentionally to, to get them to stop versus coming straight through the drive through, you know, straight through ignoring a stop sign and immediately going left. We thought that was a safer procedure. All right, are there any further questions of the applicant? If there are none, we can move on to some other speakers. Um, and I will ask all the speakers, obviously we do have a long agenda tonight and many people wishing to speak on the various items, so I'll ask that you Keep your remarks as concise as, as pop possible and not uh, simply repeat what others have said. So uh, again, can I see a show of hands who would like to speak on this item? Uh, yes, please, you can come to the microphone. You, you can decide. <laughs> Go ahead and please state your name and address for the record. Yes, uh, commissioners, council member Bender, my name is Michael Wilson, 3439 St. Louis Avenue. I am a member of the Cedar Isles Dean Neighborhood Association Board and the Sentinel Land Use and Development Committee. Uh, the first slide that was put up showed the townhouses just on the other side of the railroad track. I live in one of those townhouses, so I'm a nearby neighbor to this property. 
Uh, I'm also the Sibna representative on the Midtown Greenway Coalition Board, and I'm the chair of the Improvements Committee. So I have a variety of ways in which I am uh, very uh, uh, involved and interested in the outcome of, uh, of, of this. The uh, resolution that you've seen from the uh, Sidna board certainly states that we are opposed to the drive through. Uh, we realize that this is allowed by city code. Uh, so uh, you know, we don't have much to say about that, but uh, we do want to state our opposition to having yet another drive through in our neighborhood and yet another drive through in a commercial area of the city. Uh, if the city code is uh, amended at some point in the, you know, hopefully near future to further restrict drive-throughs, that would be very much in keeping with the complete streets program, which our city has put forward. We are all tremendously excited about the new public works director who uh, will be coming on board and will have all kinds of ideas to implement complete streets and uh, just all these things that make our, our urban area wonderful. Uh, another drive-through does not take us in that direction. When Highway 7 is open, people who need to use a drugstore drive-through can go four and a half minutes down Highway 7, and they've already got a 24-hour uh, 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 drugstore drive-through down there. So that being said, uh, we are very much appreciative of the uh, site improvements, uh, the landscaping, uh, looking at pedestrian and bike safety. Uh, for those of us who use it virtually every day, and many of you uh, also use it, I know several of you are, several of you are very avid bikers, and you know this area of, of very intimately as we do. Uh, it's it's really catch as catch can. So that, so there are a lot of good things that uh, that happen there. Uh, I just wanted also to say, <clears throat> um, uh, we have just celebrated the 40th anniversary of our neighborhood newspaper, Hill and Lake Press, and as a result, I've gone back through all 427 previous issues that uh, were published. Issue number one, volume one, number one, from March 1976. March 1976, 40 years ago, an article on the bar the bottom, Arnie Carlson fights Lake Area High Rise. This is Arnie Carlson, lawyer back then fighting a proposed construction of a 22-story building near Lake Calhoun and a 15-story high-rise near Cedar Lake. We've been at this for a long time, all the neighborhoods, not just sitting there. We've been at this for a long time, and safeguarding the character of our neighborhood and making sure that it's an urban neighborhood, not dwarfed by 25, 30-story high-rises, but also keeping access from the Midtown Greenway to Lake Street, and at some point in the near future, access across Lake Street into Lake Calhoun, uh, encouraging pedestrians, encouraging bikers, encouraging people sitting outside, in other words, the urban fabric. Uh, so our resolution, I think, from Sydney speaks uh, to uh, our feelings about this. Another one of the speakers is going to speak about uh, the many people who have written letters uh, just expressing dismay about this, but it's going to happen, and uh, uh, we hope changes can be made to the code so there won't be more drive-throughs. There are many other places nearby that could also have drive-throughs. We hope we don't see that. But we do appreciate the uh, uh, site plan improvements, the landscaping, the crosswalks, and, uh, and various things there. So that's what I have to say. All right, thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Yes, please come to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Craig Westgate. I'm at 3523 St. Paul Avenue. I am also on the SIDNA board. I'm the chair of the SIDNA board. I'm also on the land use committee as well. Um, I wanted to start off in kind of two different ways. The first way is that I'm the person that got numerous emails from my people that didn't understand why this was allowed. And there was a numerous amounts of them that were very opposed to why are they doing two? Because they can. Um, there hasn't been any traffic studies, there hasn't been any studies from the drugstore to say why they need to, let alone they're not opposed, they're, they're very opposed to one. Um, and it is an area that we work very diligent on trying to get more pedestrian connectivity, safety for peds and bikers. And we just, there's a part about this that we feel it is going in the wrong direction. So that's my one hat. My other hat is, as the chairman of SIDNA, the resolution in front of you, um, hats off to our land use committee because virtually all of this that's there, the reason that it's there, the thinking going into all of this um, is because of the, the people that are on the board that worked very hard in a very short period of time to try to put together 
this list of conditions. Um, our primary access, our, our primary point is making sure that that access does stay open. Um, that had been discussed at, at, at uh, had been discussed at one point in time of possibly not staying open, and so we're very we, we're very protective of that. Um, we're trying to make sure that all these little pieces that are coming in front of us, whatever development happens, whatever transit comes our way, that we are trying to connect these people pieces. We have we have um, pedestrian access trails that we've already set up with with new buildings that are being built. We're trying to continue these things. We're trying to make this a safer place and a very tough place to be safe. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I don't think so. Uh, is there anyone else? Yes, please state your name and address for the record. I'm Bob Corrick. I'm uh, chair of the Sydney Land Use Committee. My address is 2816 West Lake of the Owls Parkway. And um, the, uh, of course, it, it's been stated here that Sydney has opposed this drive through. Uh, but we have also recognized that it's a permitted use under the uh, existing zoning. Uh, and um, so uh, the neighborhood has tried to work with the company and uh, tried to uh, get as many improvements and uh, uh, safety for pedestrians and bikers. And uh, we, we do commend the, the company for making all the improvements that, that it has. And uh, we think that this is the best result in terms of the connectivity in the trail. Um, the uh, one thing I wanted to emphasize here <clears throat> is that uh, we've talked about the multimodal study, Shanna did, and uh, that was, uh, as we all know, uh, paid for by the um, uh, funds from the Southwest LRT project. Uh, and we also all know that that project is uh, not yet uh, fully consummated. Uh, so. Uh, the uh, this particular this trail that has been envisioned and studied in the in the multimodal study from um, uh, uh, Midtown Greenway to Lake Calhoun uh, was uh, studied in the context of uh, of the of the station at Chowan, the, the LRT station at Chowan, and uh, all the pedestrian activity and other types of activity that's going to go on. But it's our view that uh, at, in Sydney that um, this trail, this uh, connect, connector trail, really should be uh, embraced by the city whether or not Southwest LRT is ever built. Um, and so, uh, and uh, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, Shanna, but I, I don't think that uh, currently this trail is in our, any of our plans uh, in the city. It is, pardon? This part of the plan is not currently on the CIP, so it's not on the capital improvement plan, but it is a project on the public works list being long term, which is five to 10 years. So, it, okay, so is it a recognized bicycle trail then in the bike plan? I think it's only shown right now in the multimodal study. Okay, that, that my point is that uh, this multimodal study is sort of viewed as something connected to LRT and I think that it's important that we've gone through all this work with uh, with Dorn. Uh, we have a really excellent trail through uh, private property here, something that's hard to do. And uh, we're uh, recommending that uh, even though this is not totally your purview in terms of you're not uh, approving bike trails and that sort of thing, that if we are going to approve that such a plan as we're talking about here with Dorn, uh, that, that, uh, that the uh, that the trail, that the total connector trail be in the city's long-term bike plan. And, and that's our, right. con, our point. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on item two? Uh, seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing and uh, commissioners, we just have uh, one application before us, a site plan review. Are there any further questions? Uh, oh, Commissioner? I have Carter. a question for staff. Maybe this is a question for Jason. But is there anything in the city code that this allows bicycles from using a drive-through? No, we've tried to use it before. Um, I worked on a Dairy Queen at Minnehaha, um, and they uh, proposed a bike-through, um, but it's never been opened. So there's nothing that prohibits 
bicycles from using a drive through for Minneapolis ordinance. Of course, uh, Commissioner Kronzer, individual companies may have their own policies mm -hmm. about who they serve or don't serve <coughs> in drive throughs but certainly city code doesn't prohibit anybody from accessing a drive through on a bike or on foot. Okay, thank you. I have another question for you. You also may not know the answer to this. Um, so our existing LRT station areas have PO districts, pedestrian overlay districts. The, the proposed stations do not. Do you happen to know why the proposed stations do not have pedestrian overlay districts as a as a view to the for to the future as as we anticipate these projects coming online? So we do anticipate a rezoning study coming online, assuming Southwest LRT moves forward to the point where staff is prepared to undergo that type of a study. And then um, as we have seen in other transit station areas, staff has adopted pedestrian oriented overlay districts. Uh, that particular type of district would prohibit a drive through. That is not currently on the property. Right. Do, uh, do you know the timing of that staff work? Uh, I think the last I spoke with the long range planner for the Southwest sector, it was dependent upon um, uh, some review related to the environmental impact statement. Of the Southwest Jason, project? Jump in if you have more. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the specific proposal for the timing of that rezoning study, Commissioner Kronzer. Commissioner Bender. Mr. Wittenberg, has, that, has, has anyone started the process of, of that zoning code text amendment? Specifically to rezone around the station area? Uh, not that I'm aware of. No. Right. Are there any further questions or would someone like to start the discussion off with a motion? Commissioner Cronson. I would like to make a motion. All right. Um, to approve staff recommendations to approve the site plan with the six stated conditions with an added seventh stated condition. Um, and number seven, my proposal is uh, the drive shoe shall allow bicycles and the applicant shall install a sign facing the Midtown Greenway stating such. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, item 2A, the site plan review with the six stated conditions as well as the seventh condition uh, related to requiring that the drive through allow bicycles and adding a sign that states that. Commissioner Slack. Yeah, I just want to go on record and and uh, explain while I, why I will be voting against uh, the motion. Um, you know, I, if, if anywhere uh, a drive through was appropriate, I, I guess this would be it on this site. Um, I guess the problem here is that it's allowed by the current ordinance. Um, looking at the site, visiting the site, looking through the documentation, uh, that parking lot is currently a, a really underutilized parking lot. It's essentially tucked behind the building. Um, I think historically, and this is just based on my perceptions, uh, maybe this is a staff parking lot, an overflow parking lot, uh, and so it's, it's not always full. I think with the drive-through, you're starting to allow more automobile traffic uh, into that area. Uh, I think the, the improvements uh, related to the bike and peds uh, are, are fantastic. Uh, the race crossings, the separated bike lane, pedestrian sidewalk are fantastic. Uh, it's unfortunate that it's an either or in this situation. Um, I don't really understand why uh, it can't just be one single drive lane uh, through uh, this drive-through area. And I do see a real issue with safety as it relates to the current stop uh, sign location and, and how automobiles will be exiting uh, from the drive through lane uh, to get back into uh, vehicular circulation to, to head south. And so uh, for those reasons, I'll be voting against the motion. Commissioner McRino. Uh, I just wanted to check with uh, Mr. Wittenberg. I'm definitely supportive of Commissioner Kronzer's motion in spirit uh, to require the, um, the applicant to let bikes use the drive through lane, but is that something that we are able to do? I mean, that kind of will come down to whatever Walgreens wants to do, I guess. Uh, commissioners, uh, in this context, I, I believe the commission has the authority to add that condition to the site plan review application. <clears throat> right. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Commissioner McGreen. Well, I'll just say in general, um, you know, I, as I think in the neighborhood folks acknowledge this too, we're not really allowed to do a ton here. I mean, it's allowed by code. It is obviously very underwhelming that 
there's going to be a train station here probably in five years and we're going to be locking in a, a drive through and a, a one story Walgreens with a parking lot right next to that. Um, but that said, I think it is nice that we're at least getting what's estimated in the, the study here, $100,000 worth of public realm improvements with the bike connection to Lake Street. Um, so I will be supporting that motion. <laughs> Commissioner Kronz. Yeah, just, I guess, speaking to my motion for a minute. Uh, now, I was involved with, with this multimodal study uh, on my day job, and I remember when this was going on, everyone said, well, it's a great idea, but that'll never happen, this this, um, this bike pen connection from the Midtown Greenwood to Lake Street. And, um, you know, this is something the applicant does not have to do. Um, so I, I, I do thank the applicant for taking that step and doing um, something good in the for the public to make this connection. I mean, our hands are tied, as Commissioner Magrino has says, this is allowed. Um, so I think this is maybe some of the facts of life. Take the good with the bad, and um, maybe get our codes uh, tuned up a little bit here. Thank you. All right, we have a motion. Uh, Commissioner Breland, is that uh, you? Uh, I was wondering if the applicant could answer a question. Oh. Uh, yes. that. Would be fine. So the second drive through, uh, so I have a Walgreens on East Lake that has a drive through and I've been using it on my motorcycle mostly. Um, and just the logistics of how prescriptions are filled, um, it's like waiting in line. So having two cars with their motors running, waiting for things, doesn't necessarily make anything faster in my understanding of how pharmacy logistics work. Am I incorrect in that? I'm not an expert on pharmacy logistics. Uh, we do have other drugstores within our portfolio. And um, and I can speak from example, you know, often when I take my kids in to the doctor, um, they auto fill at, at a Walgreens. Um, and when I do go to the drive-thru, they're re immediately ready for me uh, to be picked up. And I think maybe that's one of the uh, preferences of having a double drive through. If there is someone waiting, they can still service other customers. I, I, I don't mean to be argumentative, but it's this, the same person has to go find the bag with the name on it, whether it's ready or not. So I, I don't, having something ready doesn't mean you can come in and grab it. It still has the same kind of personnel issues. So I, I just, I think you might be wasting your money with the two drive-throughs, and um, I think it would be advantageous to have one. But that's my opinion. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion to approve? Uh, if there is none, clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Breland. Aye. Slack. No. Magrino. Aye. Lipke Pier? <coughs> Aye. Kronzer? Aye. Gagnon? Aye. Bender? Aye. So that's six to one. All right, and that motion carries. That concludes our discussion on item two. Uh, our next item for discussion is item three, the Bricks Grocery and Deli at 915 West Broadway. And uh, staff is Mr. Hanauer. And I believe, Commissioner Magrino, you had a, a brief question on this item. Maybe we don't need a full uh, presentation just in the interest of time. Maybe you could ask your question, Mr. Hanauer. Yeah, I was wondering, you know, looking through the, uh, the site plan here, um, the applicant's requesting a variance for um, no side yard setbacks, which I, I think is fine given the, the circumstances. Um, I guess I wanted to ask if the applicant would be amenable to bricking up the space that's going to be left between the two buildings because um, we're kind of going to be, I think you said it was be less than a foot there. Right. So you're going to be, yeah. and I will let the applicant talk. But just in communication with the applicant, yes, they are willing to have along West Broadway no visible space between the existing building to the west and to build out to the property line to the east. So mm -hmm. when you're going, a pedestrian or a, a driver on West Broadway would not see any space between the buildings. They are willing to do that. Okay. So I, I don't know if we need to do the whole. And uh, well, yeah, yeah, we we still will need to hold a public hearing on yeah. this item. But uh, Mr. Hanauer, I might just ask if if uh, we are in agreement that uh, we want to add 
condition stating that? Should that be added to the site plan review or one of the variants? To make it explicit, yes. Okay, okay. Yes. Chair Brown, um, I believe there is someone here from the public that would also like to talk and I can, I can talk about um, the reason I can sum that up, that up as well. One of the letters in your addendum packet is from the neighboring property to the west. Their concerns with grading, that being the current grading situation that is the top picture is after the fire that took place, but before the demolition of the bricks building. The, the I believe the person uh, that owns or manages this building is here to express their concerns, and it's about the grading that's currently in place and that's allowed water to infiltrate the basement. That is something that's beyond the applications that are in front of you. All right. Uh, are there any questions of Mr. Hanauer at the moment? Uh, if there are none, at this time I'll open the public hearing on this item. I'd like to ask the applicant to speak first, if someone is here uh, to speak on behalf of the applicant. And please state your name and address. My name is uh, George Barr. I'm with Barr Nelson Construction. I'm representing uh, Nader of uh, Bricks Grocery. Um, we, this has been a long process for him. As you're aware of, there were four buildings that burnt down on West Broadway. Um, three of the people that demolished their buildings decided to not rebuild. So Mr. Nader has decided to take um, I think he's owned the store or bought it about 14 or 15 years ago. Um, he's uh, taking whatever insurance proceeds he has in addition to money out of his own pocket, wishes to rebuild. And that's what we're hoping to start shortly. Um, I didn't have a chance to get this to the Planning Commission, but I did have a meeting with uh, NERC, and we have a support letter uh, supporting the rebuild of Bricks Grocery. Um, this has been a long process. Uh, he had that fire last April, and uh, he wants to get started as quickly as possible. All right, thank you. And you can hand that letter to the clerk to be submitted for the record. Are there any questions of the applicant? Uh, if there are none, uh, we can move on to any other speakers. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Yes, and please state your name and address for the record. Good evening, gentlemen and ladies. Um, my name is Chidi Ebujo, and I'm the current custodian of the property next to the proposed building that they are trying to build. Uh, that would be 919 West Broadway Avenue. Um, I'm not here to oppose the building, to uh, the construction of the new building, but I'm here basically because uh, Mr. Mr. Barr, who is in charge of uh, Barr Constructions, when they were demolishing the building, they caused some damages to our property. And as the city planner has already explained to you, he has just told you that they are asking for a variance to make sure that there is no gap between the two buildings. However, there is an existing problem right now because of the way Mr. Barr graded that land. And I do have video and pictures to show you. Ever since Mr. Barr you know, uh, demolished the building and graded the land, he graded the land in such a way that the water, uh, the rainwater that falls is tilting towards our building. And we have owned that building for over 15 years. We have never had any kind of uh, flood in there. And we've been dealing with this flood. We've cleaned it twice, but each time it rains, the water comes in. So the problem needs to be taken care of on the outside if we are to stop the problem on the inside. And I have pleaded with Mr. Barr, since he's a contractor, he has all the heavy equipment. To, I mean, to do the thing because what happened there was because in the early 1900s when these buildings were built, they had limestones. And the reason for the limestone is to pave away the water. Mr. Barr destroyed those limestones that, are, that was in the middle be between our building and their building. Now there's water going in there and uh, he's asking for permission for a variance for this property to be constructed. If this property is being constructed, the way it is right now, we're going to be having flooding and there will be no way to get in. So I'm just asking this committee to hold up on giving Mr. Barr any kind of permit to, to do this until that problem on the exterior of the property is taken care of. That's all I'm here for. All right. 
Thank you. Are there any questions of the speaker? Uh, if there are none, is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? We, we can, yeah, yeah. As as the applicant, you can, you can respond. I a bunch of paperwork that I did not want to present to the planning commission. And I, I, I will just add, you, it's a, you know, it's some, a waste some of those, of time. So, yes. some of those concerns are, well, well they're valid right. concerns. As, as Mr. I Adams, had a conversation with Al Olson, Olson, who is the head of the inspection department in the city of Minneapolis. Um, we agreed to provide a grading plan as part of our building permit application. Okay. Uh, we understand uh, that um, we that the owner of 919 has some concerns. Uh, when we did the demolition of the building, it required a soil, soil erosion plan permit and a demolition permit. Those were signed off by David Bond, who was the building inspector for that area. Okay, um, I'm not going to get into uh, our insurance adjuster being out there to help him with any potential claims and he was instructed to mitigate uh, any water intrusion on his building, which he did not do. So in short, we have to get our plans approved by the city for building permit grading plan and we will adhere to any requirements that the city inspection department and plan review department puts okay. upon us. Thanks for that Thank clarification. You. Are there any further questions <laughs> of the applicant? Uh, if there are none, is there anyone else who would like to speak on item three? See no one, I'll close the public hearing on this item. And uh, we have, let's see here, three items before us, two variances and a site plan review. Would someone like to start things off with the motion? Commissioner Luffy Pierre. Um, yeah, I will uh, uh, move staff recommendation for uh, variance A to reduce interior side yard setback. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna support this for a few reasons. I'll talk about the site plan review, but I do actually think um, your concerns are um, interesting and valid, but we aren't allowed to delay um, approval of this based on a civil matter. However, I do think as an architect that actually constructing a building without the, on the, on the setback for the most part, and perhaps um, with how they plan to slope the roof will actually do a lot more to alleviate your water concerns than having a site that's freshly dug up and not compacted. I would imagine they didn't compact the soil readily since they knew they'd be digging it up for a new foundation shortly. And that's probably, if I had to guess, without having been on site what's causing the problem so um, well we're not allowed to do any ruling based on that I would say that this is probably the best thing to actually mitigate future rain damage to your I assume your basement and foundation walls is to get this constructed with adequate roof drainage of the water um, so that's in short why I'm uh, going for uh, variance a all right we have a motion and a second uh, to approve variance a is there any further discussion seeing none clerk please call the roll Fender? Aye. Dagnan? Aye. Kronzer? Aye. Lipke Pier? Aye. Magrino? Aye. Slack? Aye. Freeland? Aye. That's 7 0. And that motion carries. We have second variance and a site plan review. Commissioner Lupe Pier. Um, I'm also going to move staff recommendation, staff recommendation for variance B to um, reduce the minimum required parking and as well as the site plan review. And um, an explanation I'm, I'm lumping those two together because I feel like this is very um, good urban design, especially for West Broadway. Having sat on the West Broadway Live Steering Committee, this is exactly what the committee envisioned when they talked about that historic Main Street being preserved and enhanced and revitalized. And I'm so excited that investments are being made in this manner that keeps it consistent with um, the finer qualities of the neighborhood, as um, those who live in North Minneapolis are well aware we have many. So um, I'm excited. I think that it's wonderful. I think it's um, great. It just shows the continued energy of redevelopment along the avenue in a smart way. And both of those things help support that. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second to approve item B, uh, variance for off-street parking and item C, the site plan review. Uh, any further discussion on, on uh, those motions? Commissioner Magrino. Yeah, I wanted to add that condition to the site plan review that would be item eight, um, that the applicant continue the brick face um, along the side of the building to meet with the building that's right next to it. But yeah, I definitely agree with everything that Commissioner Luke Pierre said. Um, it's, you know, there's been some losses in this part of town and it's great to have something being rebuilt that kind of fits the urban character that used to be there. You don't get that a lot anywhere in Minneapolis. Usually you end up with parking lot out front. 
All right. So, uh, Commissioner Macrino, you are uh, moving that we add an eighth condition uh, to the site plan review that uh, the brick face is continued to meet with the adjacent building. Uh, is there a second to add that condition motion and a second? We can add that con condition on a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that motion to add an eighth condition carries. Uh, we can go back to our original motion.